Hello guys, it's Julius here from Aurora Designs. Um, you may also know me as Yukon. And with this first video, I'm starting a new a tutorial series about modeling. Um, and this series will, yeah, it is for the really Blender beginners. So for people who never work really with Blender before or never modeled anything, um, so this tutorial will go a bit more into detail than the thylacine tutorial series and um, I'm demonstrating this on the Radical Remake Mercode. I hope you have fun and learn something, so let's start. Okay, so um, before we start modeling I'd like to show you that's not really how you have to do it but it helps me keeping things organized. So um, this is for for projects um this is the i have usually three folders one called mesh one called skin one called references um since i will not skin it or it's not planned yet uh there's no skin folder yet but we have the mesh and references and if we click on the refs there was also one for mesh and later one maybe for texture if we click on that that are all the references I've collected, maybe we'll need more, but for now that will be it. As you can see, I have already um, collected the original um, Meerkat, the NIF file, and the texture, so we can see how the skeleton is, and then we have to fit our model on it later on because that is important for rigging. Um, but for now, as you can see, I have one. For the F, we can just take a look. One for the side, or different ones for the side, for the front, for the body. That might be interesting for the teeth and mouth. And also, the body is nicely shown here. For the back, maybe. I don't think we'll need it, but maybe for the ears. And that is really, that is really helpful, this position. Um, from the front view, because that will more or less be the position we will model it in and these legs are really hard to model usually so um, it's good to have a kind of nice reference for it for the claws and the, the belly another one for the head and this is, this is just some anatomy I've collected just in case maybe we'll need it um, it's always nice to have of course yeah um, I think we will need more, but that's it for for the beginning. So let's switch to Blender. We have here, yeah, our and our scene, and for now we don't need anything of those because first thing we will do is um, adding in our references into the scene here. So what we can do is, as you can see, this one um, has kind of um, orange line outline so that means your object is selected so you can make everything with it you can't um, make every anything with the lamp because it's not selected if we um, click on it with right mouse button then you can see the lamp gets selected and we can move it and stuff like that I'll teach you later how to do this. so we can also if we had shift um, and right click we can select more objects so we can select it all or we can just hit A so if we hit A everything in the scene will be selected um, and if we hit A again nothing will be selected so we can hit A and we can hit X and delete it right so X for deleting it's nice to have those shortcuts because they really um, optimize your workflow so hit enter and they'll get deleted or you just can click on that so um, now we need to add in our reference images into the scene by the way you can move if you have a mouse if you um, click on shift and on the mouse wheel then you can kinda move the whole scene and if you just hit click on the mouse wheel you can rotate around this um, thing here um, you can see these two lines the the green one and the red one the red one is called 
x-axis and the green one and y. There's also another one, the z, which is this one. It's blue, you can't see it yet, because we are in um, a different view. I forgot the name, sadly, but if you hit 5 on your numpad, then we change um, the view. So it's just the same scene, but I can demonstrate it with something. So the cube here, we hit 5, then it's perspective view. That's the right name, perspective. And if we hit 5 again, it's author. You know, I don't know how it's pronounced correctly. So delete that. Um, and also nice to have, if we had 1 on our numpad, then we are immediately in the front view. And then we can also see this blue Z axis line. And if we had 3, if we had 3 in the side view. And if we had 8, uh, no, not 8, but 7, we are in the top view. And so 1, 3, 7. And with those other buttons, you can move your viewport. Just try it out. So go to front view because we will add our front um, reference first, I think. And to do so, we will, um, or you have to enable a really useful add-on called Import Images as Plines. And you can do so by going to the file here. And then you can go to User Preferences. There's also, you can see there's this shortcut. So we could also hit Control, Alt, and U, but we can just click on it and a new window will automatically pop, pop up. And we are already in our add-ons here, selected with blue. Then we have this um, search function. So we just can hit Import. And then we can see here that's the Import Images as Planes. And I already enabled it. So what you should do then is be sure that one is enabled with this box checked. And then you can also go to save user settings so it will stay the same even if you close Blender, if you open it again, you already have that here. So, save user settings. Now we can click back. So, <coughs> sorry. Um, yes. Um, every time we um, add something in Blender, we can see where this thing here. And that is the 3D cursor. And it's at the moment, it's located in the center. Um, to do so, you can, if we just use left click, we can position our 3D cursor somewhere. Right? If we want to have it in the center, we hit Shift C. So it automatically snaps into the center. Then um, that's quite helpful because a new object will, every time, will be placed where the, the cursor is. So if we. Um, Shift A at a plane, it is where the cursor is. If we put the cursor here, the plane will be here. Sometimes if you make this mistake, you can Shift C, put the cursor in the, in the um, center again, and then if you hit Shift S, by uh, if you have the plane selected, then you can go Selection to Cursor, and that will automatically go back. Just um, for you to know, that might be kind of helpful. So, if we hit Shift A, mesh here. There's also now a new option called images as planes. And if we click on that, we can see here um we can select um an image. So we can click on that one so every image will be shown. That is quite a nice feature. So we are in front view and we should um select the front view image. Now, I'm not too sure which one is nice. We can maybe take a look again. Um, that one is okay. That one is a bit blurry, but that's not too important for modeling. That one looks nice. We also have to look which one we use for the side view. I think we will use that one. Or that one. But they're basically the same. And if we can uh, look at the position, the head looks a bit more down. Um, we want to have more or less the same thing. That's always easier. So this head looks a bit down too. Um, so that looks fine. I think we'll just use that one for for now. We can always change it, of course. So we um, select it. Click Enter.
or we can also go here import image as planes um, a problem is you can't select more than one so this might uh, occur as problems just go and click one and then import image as planes and now you can see it imported it as a plane so you may wonder where is the image that's a solid um, color like the pl normal plane so we can go into top view by hitting seven and that is because we are automatically we're still in the uh, solid mode so you can see that's the mode displayed in this yeah thing here and if we click on it we can see solid mode texture material rendered wireframe bounding box you can check them out there they don't really will change the your scene but we want to go to texture so we can see it so now we are in texture mode and we can see it and the great thing is there's no UV unwrapping, um, you, sh you don't have to make anything, it will automatically import it as a plane, fitting perfectly. But a problem is, we want to have it in the front view, but it's in top view. So, we can, if we hit R, we can rotate it. Um, note that it rotates it only around the axis, so in front view, so it rotates it here. Side view, rotate it here. Top view, rotate it here. So what we can do is rotate it about um, minus 90 degrees so we want to make it like this um, and if we hit 90 it will um, uh, rotate about 90 it will go the wrong side um, but we, if we hit R and then we can type in um, a number and if we hit minus 90 it's there so that's nice we can um, move it up a bit so with G we move objects, right? Also we have these we have this thing here with the blue arrow, the yellow and the red one. They um are for the axis of course. And if we click on one with left click, it will move it only around the Y or the um X or the Z axis. If you try it and now you want to go back because if you now um, yeah, leave it, don't click anymore, it will snap there. You can just control Z to go back. You can, while you're holding left click, you can just click right click and then it will snap back. So we want to have it uh, a bit up because that will be the head and then there will be the legs here and here. And that is nice for now. Um, now we can go into side view and add the other um, the other reference for the side and we just planes. And we will use that one as mentioned. And we can also, if we want to rotate it on our side, we can hit. If you hit R, it rotates it only around those axis as I already said but if we hit um, R twice so R R then this will rotate it a bit more freely um, and if we hit R R 90 it will rotate it always to your viewport so if we go to a front view rotate it to your viewport side view R R 90 rotate it to your viewport that's just something you um, um, yeah should just learn and accept um, it's like this and it's good to um, know that because it's really easy so now we can rotate it back R90 and now we have it in the side view so what we want to do now is we want to make them more or less the same size because um, we can't work with this now we want to have one if like they will be one animal like if we go to the side view it should be more or less the same than if we go to the front view from the size and rotation and everything so first thing we can start is we can go and move it and um, we can it's automatically snapped here on the y-axis the green one so that's a nice position I tell you why I tell I will tell you later why it is a great position M we can scale it down and if we just look a bit we can see see we can still scale it down a bit more now um 
move it a bit more in front and up. And before we work more, just drink something. <laughs> mm. We have to adjust the other image. So, um, the problem is that this one isn't in the middle. Like we only want the the half or the head on the right side, but um, in the middle around the the Z axis. So um, we have to take a look. First of all, we can move that one a bit here. What we can do is we can maybe that is by the way that are the properties here. This now we are on the render settings. This, for example, are the object settings. You can, if you just go there with your mouse, I will already show you what it is. Click on it. We can go to wire frame. So that will make a wire wire thing. I don't know if it works. It doesn't. Okay, then we have to do it um, another way. Um, just try another thing. Didn't work either. So okay. Um, I come to that one later to those options. Um, we want to have a line here, so we can see where exactly the middle thing is. The problem is that we um we have that one here in the middle, but we can't see it if we are in front view. Right? It, only if we select it. But if we go and hit select the other one. It's not there anymore. So, what we can do is, we can, because that's one in the front view, we can go and make another edge that should show it. So, we can change our mode, and we go from object mode to edit mode. You can also do so by hitting tap. And you can see, so that's where the interesting part starts now. You can see, let's switch to solve view to make it a bit more general. And um, we have this plane here, and this plane is one single face. Okay, that's a face. Um, it is made about fr um, from one, two, three, and four vertices. So that little point here is called vertex. Notice one vertex, two vertices. So we can move every, make everything with this. Move it, rotate it, scale it. That won't bring anything because we can't. So we can't move. Uh, we can't rotate or scale one single vertex. Um, but we have that one. If we select two, we have an edge. So we now we can rotate that edge, scale that edge move that edge right so 3d models contain um from about i don't know how it's how it's grammatically correct but from vertices edges and faces so vertices can create edges so if you have two vertices they can when you fit they fill them they can get an m they can be an edge. If you have three or four, you can get a face. You can select. We are now in vertex select mode, so you can see that here, vertex select. If we go to this one, edge select. So we just select the edge. And this one is the face select mode. It selects the whole face, right? Notice that we're in edit mode. So we only are in this object. We are in the edit mode, so that we can't select any other objects that won't work. So what we can do now is we can duplicate this vertex by hitting shift D you can already I th also, also I think you can go to mesh here no it's not here somewhere here and um, no it's not here it's here so you have those tools here too so you can you can also hit on duplicate and we have another one can see it already 
moves it. We we don't want that. We want to um, use shortcuts that's way fast and more productive. So Shift D, and you already have this, and you can move it without selecting everything first. Anything first, click on um, left mouse button to yeah set the selection and um, to make it that way you want. And now if we hit E, we extrude it. So we will extrude it. That means we will duplicate it, but also already with a um, edge. We can also select the edge and extrude it, and we'll extrude a face, as you can see. Well, we don't want that back. Control Z. Now it should work. If we now go to this one, we can see we have this single edge, and that will be shown here. And it's perfectly on the Z axis because it works like rotation. Just go select that object back, go into edit mode. You can move it, but only around the um, in the side view thing. So if you want to move it uh, around that axis, you have to go into front view and top. You have to go to top view. Well, that's actually the same as front view in this case. But um, yeah. So we can move it also to here. It won't change anything in front view. So there's still this line. So if we now go back to tag shift mode to see our reference, we can see here is the middle. Now we can go here and tap and go to edit mode, and we can rotate it a bit to make it fit. Now, well, to have this, um, to make it easier and to give you more possibilities. You can see we have this orange thing here, and that's around where it rotates it or scales it. We can change that now. We have um, this one that which is called the pivot center for rotating and scaling. And if we click on it, we have different options. For example, individual origins, individual. Sorry click on that that is actually quite cool if we just for example just um, yeah we just duplicate that one and if we um, select those things here um, by the way that was if you have one object which is not um, combined or merged with another one so these are all one mesh that one and that one, one object, but they are not, yeah, they're not fitted. They um, are not connected. Uh, so if you have one mesh and you hit Control and L, you select the whole connected thing of the mesh. Um, so if we have those different things here, um, and we want to scale them or rotate them um, with individual origins, we rotate them, and you can see. For each thing of the mesh, it will rotate it individually. See, that one rotates about its center, and that one rotates about its center. Um, yeah. If we change it back to median point, it will rotate it about, you can see here, the median point of the mesh, which is there. Um, another thing is, another thing, the 3D cursor is now there. So we can also make it um, rotating a, a, around this 3D cursor. So we can make it, for example, here, place it here, and then it rotates around it. We can make it here, rotates it around the 3D cursor, around the 3D cursor. So we don't need that. Control L, select the whole thing, delete it. Oh, by the way, if we're in object mode, we have in edit mode, we have more possibilities for deleting. Just to show you. By the way, I now extruded two edges. If you hit F, you will fill those and create um, a nicely plane. I will come back to that one later, of course, guys, because that is really essential. That's just now showing the delete function. If you go here and hit delete you can see those different things. I will explain them later on but you can see here vertices, edges, faces. Um, so you can 
if we move on here, you can see that, for example, if we would delete that one and go to vertices, every vertice, every sorry, every vertex that is selected will delete will be deleted. So that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. So that would be the only one that will be still there. For example, now we just have this one. If we just want to delete the face, we just have to go to face, delete faces, or we just select those two vertices and now go to vertices and delete them. Um, yeah. So um, to come back to our Mercat, we can select everything with A and now we just it's already here set to 3D cursor. That's what I wanted to show you. Now we can rotate it around the 3D cursor to get it, get it perfectly centered. Right? So that should be fine for now and yeah I think we can start with modeling the oh no we can't forgot to change that now we want to make them we don't need that line anymore deleted and um, now we have to make those things fit here so um, I just had um, four to move around this if we hit six on the numpad we move on the right side and four to the other and we want that the nose is on the same place the eyes are on the same place inside and the head 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 so we have to rotate it maybe a bit down but maybe in that direction so now the eyes are Find the nose is not so like that. The eyes are fine, the nose is not. Eyes, nose, everything should be fine. We can move that one back to see if the ear is also fitting. That looks nice from this kind of view. That one's more or less one, that one's more or less one, more or less just roughly. Um, there will always be problems with that, um, lining them up, but as, um, if you get more experience with modeling, um, that well, won't be a big issue later on. We can move that a bit to the side, so it won't be disturbing now when we begin with modeling. Um, so, yeah, we can change that back to individual audience. That's usually the, not the standard one, but the one that I like to use as a standard thing. Um, Shift C, go back into the center, and now we can add, <coughs> we can add another mesh. Um, Shift A, add mesh. It doesn't really, it's actually isn't really important which one we take we can just hit um, we can just use a plane by the way and if you added a thing uh, added a plane we have or any other object we have those options here so we can change the radius here just tap it by one and the location um, on the X Y and Z you can yeah think about a coordinate system and you give those things a value on the x, y, and z axis. The rotational is in degree, but that's not necessary because, oh, I deleted it, sorry. Um, because we won't need that. We just need one single vertex. So we tap into edit mode. And now that is really important. There are two ways to um, achieve this, only one vertex. The cleaner variant is if we hit old M and not A but old M select everything old M now you have different options you can merge all those things at the center at the cursor or collapse I don't know what collapse makes but we will use at the center which is at the moment the same as at cursor because the cursor is in the center of our mesh um, yeah at center old M click on that and we have one vertex now, really important, don't go 
into object mode back with this single vertex because otherwise I can show you now we have this one single vertex but it's not visible if you go back into edit mode then we can't it's not there and we can't really select it oh it worked I don't know why usually that shouldn't work let's see oh well that's good actually didn't know it works I thought it wouldn't work last time I tested it didn't but yeah so G never mind G um, to move it in front view and we begin with the outline of the eyes that's usually where I begin so we just put it about here now just a roughly outline you can don't give it too much detail um, but give it a bit so I'm extruding it um, to get a nice outline and now we have those last things here we can hit, we can hit F for filling them in so now we have this outline for the eye um, keep in mind we are making a 3D model for a game and for a really old game for Zootacon 2. So um, the model should be rather low poly. That means less vertices are good. The, the vertices are the detail that a model can have. So the amount of detail a model has. You can usually think of pixels and images. More pixels usually mean more detail and that's the same with those things here. Um, uh, the problem is that the game can't handle too much of them, so we um, don't use too much of them. So, just Control L to select the whole thing. You could also hit A, move it to um, inside view, move it to this eye. So, what we are going to do now is we are lining that up with our, both of our references, right? So, if we um, in front view, it's more or less fine. We can move it a bit here but that looks nice and if we go to side view it is not we still have those thing here but what we can do is we can select one vertex with right click as always and drag it here and we can do that with all of those things but that will cost a lot of time and of course we want to save time as always so we can um, enable a really cool feature which is here proportional editing and we will usually use connected because that's in most um, situations the best thing so connected full of proportional editing um, we can also hit alt O and then we can just hit O for it to be enabled uh, propor uh, editing proportional editing and alt O for connected proportional editing See, connect it has this black thing in the middle. And if we now move it, you can see the whole mesh moves. That's not what we want. With our mouse wheel, we can um, yeah, set the radius. You can see there's a circle, and we can set the radius how big this should be. So it's a bit hard to, um, to see because the background is black and our things are black too. But that should be it for now. We can move that a bit the reference doesn't um, perfectly fit with that one so might have to fix that one later on but that is more or less how it should look can move that one a bit more here yeah not perfect but I think it can rotate it a bit yeah, that should be nice. Yep, yeah, that's kind of a compromise. You always have to make compromises, especially when working with Mercats. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so chim to chim. That should be nice. Um, more or less. So we, I want to fix that just a bit 
so we have a more or less round eye because the eye is round yeah okay so how do we start how do we start now first of all we can add a mirror modifier what that does is it uh, basically uses this all the information we have here it copies them it mirrors them and puts them on the left side so we just have to model one side of our animal and you can do that by going to in our properties panel here and going to the modifiers tab you can see that's this thing here this icon click on it by um, selecting only this object we have here and we go to add modifier and we can it's under gener generate should be here the mirror modifier and it's already there nothing to have nothing to, to do it's already there and everything is fine so we can see it yeah mirrors it and it's there too so what we can do is putting the cursor back we can also do the same with this image we could but well we can do that lighter still um, yeah that's when you don't have any concept <laughs> um, so we can start modeling go back into edit mode and now there's the thing where to start so we can see on our reference uh, on our reference here and the market has a really prominent eyebrow here these are the, the jaw muscles around here so that thing here goes a bit out and that thing here goes a bit inwards you can see that here too um, you have to keep that in mind we can select that one and extrude that line we go into front view and just take a look and that's about what we want um, that will later on follow the direction of the snout but we can um, start with extruding our brow so hit E and extrude that one it's white now we can change it in a second rotate it a bit so it fits those this brow here and now that is not nice it's white why is it white because we are in texture mode and we haven't applied any textures yet to the model so it's white what we can do though is we can go to the object tab and here under this thing it's set to texture and we can change it and set it to solid so now it's solid that's more or less nice but what I want to make is um, changing this kind of modeling material because I don't like this um, standard thing so if we go to if we hit N this window will pop up by the way T is for the left one N is for the right one um, and here on the shading that won't work because we are in texture mode but if we go back to solid mode we have this new option called matcat and we can click on it and the material will automatically change we can go here and select any material that we want for example that one that looks nice and we can go back into texture mode and because our model is set to solid mode here as we can see it already has this new material so can hit N and T back because we don't want those, those windows now we have this edge here now what we want to do is we want to move it a bit out we can we could just hit G we can also hit alt and S that will scale it along the normals um, I will tell you later on what that is I'm sure um, so it gets a bit out move it here and um, that is nice we can also extrude another one and alt S because we want it to have it the same and f make it fit and oh I don't know why that happened but looks like we scaled that one um, here 
we can move it back. Mm. And now we have those edge here and we can extrude it. Select all those faces, F and fill it. So that's just for the eyebrow. We can now go to to um, front view and apply that one. So so now we have to speak a bit about topology. Topology means that all the faces flow into a nice direction and are more or less the same size or stuff like that. We can just I look in the internet to find some nice images. Um, and that means, for example, that every face should be more or less the same size and should not be stretched, but always try to get some kind of quad-like look. So like this, and not like that. Because that is stretched and that doesn't look nice. And topology is important later on. Oh, internet doesn't work, I'm not sure. Um, topology is important for animation later on, because um, topology helps your mesh to be, uh, to, um, so the animation looks uh, nice. Otherwise, with, with bad topology, you can get some kind of distortions, which we don't want because we want it to, yeah, be as realistic as possible. So good topology is important for good mesh. So what we can do now is we can, we need to maybe add some kind of edge here. So we have this face, this face, and that face. Um, we can just yeah add this edge when we hit. K, we go to the to the knife tool. We have this. That's brand new in the new Blender, which is really cool. We have this thing here, this green thing. And if we, you notice, if we go to a vertex, go to a vertex, it already snaps, snaps there and gets red. If we now click, left click. We can drag it and drag an edge, and it will automatically notice when there is an edge. For example, here, as you can see, and if we click here, um, it made a face there. If we hit enter, the face is there. Nice. So that is cool. We have a nice face there, and we um, can just, f for now, we can just delete that one in the middle. Or J to delete it all J. It's not really deleting it, but it's just removing this edge in the middle. Later on for the game, everything will be like this. So um everything will be oops um I can go to Y so we can see it a bit better. Everything will be like this. So <coughs> yeah, I was interrupted by my lovely mom, so I don't remember what we made. I just, yeah, go on with modeling. So um, this is our eye. Just go into edit mode. We don't want it like that. This is our eye and the brow. We can just select all the thing, all all the brow thing. Ch -ch -ch and we want to move that a bit outward so old s move it outward we don't want to spend too much detail on it old s because it's a rather small animal right but there's still something there's still detail we should yeah and um, we should give it Talking and modeling at the same time is a bit hard. Oops. Hey. Just want to select that one. Ah. Okay. So, just arranging the things here so it fits. 
you can just start by extruding the whole thing. That's just a bit de more detailed what I make here. Um, oh. Sorry, I just didn't select that one. Um, that looks a bit <laughs> ugly now. Oops. Ugly. Um, but I'm just um, extruding the things around here, just making them fit, making it smooth, so we can then go on soon. Just make them fit. Just try to get it um, all right around the eye, because that's actually a part where we can't really see anything because the vertices are, I just have the same color as the eye, so I want to get that finished as soon as possible we can. Um, now extrude that one and make it fit with those. And always after you extrude it, just check all the different views. Um, yeah, what happened to me now was I didn't hit G for moving, but H, and that will hide it. That could accidentally happen to you too. So if we click on H, that will hide those vertices. Um, if you want to make it back, get it back, just hit Alt and H, and it's back there. So if you might have this problem, that's how to solve it. Um, that looks rather nice. It's usually like after you extrude it, you should move it so they have the same size and position is nice on all that. We could continue with the brow actually. So we can just select those and extrude them upwards and rotate them a bit because that's how the brow will look. And now we're actually already looking at topology. So um, the topology or the faces should flow in that direction. Should come from here and go here. Um, so they should go about this brow and then should flow in the middle where they meet. So we don't need that one. This edge is really small. We can make them hit them at center and that will automatically remove one vertex and we can extrude that one even further let's get that one up move every vertex for it itself correct that it's always here and we can see we already got a nice more or less nice flow coming on we can hit draw all edges so every edge will be visible in object mode and it, there the detail so the vertices are flowing like this way. That's actually cool to, to select things, um, by the way. Control. Let's go to vertex select mode. Control. And then you can have this lasso thing by hitting the um, left mouse button. Like this. And you can select different areas. And if you select one and hit Control Shift, you can deselect some with the lasso function. So we want to keep that brow. Whoops. Sorry. Windows button. Oh. Wrong button again. Alt S. Want to keep that one out. Just a bit. Mm, sometimes it's kind of hard to work with this option. But that's about how it should look. And we got a nice detail here. So let's just extrude it and go to the center and go to the middle. Now there's a problem here as you can see. They just go to the other side which we don't want. We can just extrude it here. If we go to the modifiers tab we have our settings for the modifiers and we want to enable clipping. So now if we move them in the middle they will cl yeah, clip together exactly in the middle. And now we can just move it back here and scale it up maybe a bit 
and maybe move that one a bit so we have a nice topology and we can extrude that one or we can already extrude this one we can just put it here for now and rotate it and move it inside view um, now you can see that is this is a really pointy and straight line we want to make it a bit more smooth so we um, want to add an edge in here because then we can move this edge out and it's get it gets smoother we can use that um, knife method but if we have just one face here we just want to to add another edge in the middle we can hit control R and that will add a loop cut so what is a loop a loop is one edge or more edges together um, that flow in one line for example we can if we hit shift and alt and right click we can select a loop you can see that as a loop that's a loop so that's really nice if you for example want to select something like that this loop here then you can hit shift and alt and right click and that's the loop so control R to add this loop in here and now we can alt S move it a bit to make it a bit more smooth like that and now um, we can fill those faces and be sure we have to go back to um, vertex select mode we can fit those faces so problems that can occur when modeling in general with the new blender something I want to show you we can select those all that's actually a cool sorry I'm talking too much I know that's a cool method to um, make things fit if you don't know how the topology will go later on so we just select the thing alt shift alt um, right click to select the loop and then go F so the cool thing of new blender is um, they are angons angons are faces which have not only usually a face has four edges or three edges and later on the uh, the game or the scripts or every, anything else will convert everything that has four edges into something with three edges um, and I have to drink something really hard to, to, to talk all the time and because the game can only handle something with three edges faces with three edges the problem is that one has not three or not four it has one two three four five six seven edges uh, edges um that's an angon so you have to keep in mind that won't work in game but it's a cool thing for us if we want to um look how the topology goes so we can we already have this face we could hit f then there would be this kind of a line and this edge would be created the problem is um let's go back and disable that one um that this edge is not in the face for example like that one but it's over the face S um, it's hard to, to to tell you that let's go back I can um, it's easier to show it to you in this example for for example <laughs> um, F you can see if you move that one up or down that is the face this edge is not on the face it's above the face it's an extra thing so if we want to add an edge which is already on the thing we have to hit J that's kinda logical because if we for example go here hit select the thing and hit all J it will remove it as I told you um, so that is nice we have created this edge here and we want to 
do the same thing here. The problem is there is an um, vertice, a vertex, sorry, f missing here. We could also go Control R, but we can see that won't work. Um, why? Because it al um, always works, only works with um, this kind of th um, work. Uh, th sorry, it works only with squads. So I think. That's the way it works with squads. That means with quads, not squads. <laughs> Those things with four edges, the faces with four edges. So that has more. One, two, three, four, five edges. So um, control R doesn't work. But we can add another vertex in here by subdividing this edge. To do so, we go can do it, I think we could do it here, loop tools, maybe it's here, no it's not, subdivide here, we could do so, we're just hitting subdivide or we could go to W and then we go to subdivide and then this edge will be subdivided, now we can select those two vertex vertices and hit J and voila! That's nice. An edge is created. Mm. And the topology looks fine in front view, in side view it doesn't. Um, but I think that's okay. Maybe they, that line is a bit too strong here, so we can smoothen it out a bit. <laughs> Uh, that should look nice. So we can continue with this by um, um, modeling this brow here. So as we can see there's this brow, prominent brow around this area here and it's curved and we want also the topology to be curved here. So it's curved around the eye and it is curved around here so it should also be curved around here. So um, we can do so by we can see that's the part we are talking about. We can select that one, just extruding it. We can scale a bit up and go in front view, select those vertices and move it a bit to the right. And just moving that one on the brow. I'm making it a bit too detailed I think for this small animal but actually we can go a bit more into detail now with the BFB scripts we can add a bit more detail because creating lots is really easy um, and I don't know if you know what those are I'll maybe explain it later, but it will allow us to give it a bit more detail because the game can handle it. So, I modeled this curve here around, so that's important. Try to make it as always smooth and stuff like that, so it's round and smooth. And try to to make the faces more or less the same size. So what we don't want is something like this. One face really long stretch, one face really small. Um, of course, sometimes it's needed like this one because that's this type of... Oh, we might want to add that one here. That's this type of a detail that should be like this. But normally, we want every face to be more or less the same. Um, so we can see we have those here, this face here, and this face here, and we want them to be connected. That is where how the topology should flow in this case. So we want to have this round thing here. <laughs> Looks like it has two eyes. But um, we can see here there's a problem in the side view, so we move that, rotate it a bit here it here, scale it down, maybe move that one too, 
that should look nice and we can just move that one up now we want to um, um, make that one fit and fill this whole space here and as I already said it's a nice thing to just select everything hit F to so now we can experiment with it we have this edge here and we have this this three th uh, three things here um, so we have to take a look which faces or which edges um, in the end will be fake uh, will be combined and I think it's obvious that those will fit so we can hit J so that's the first step those will of course be fit in the end now we have those we have this one in the middle um, actually we have those two in the middle rotate them so they actually are in the middle but we have this this and those in the middle now and um, we can subdivide that one here and J that one here and J it here so we have this kind of detail we can also already bring it out a bit like that um, and now we can make them fit here that would actually be okay already because we have one triangulated one quad one quad and one quad here and on the other side but those are stretched and that's not nice so we can just select them and that is a really cool thing now if we hit J you can see that would cross this border across this edge and then automatically a new vertex is selected and that is great because now it allows us to give the whole thing a bit more detail and now we have modeled some nice brows and that is nice um yeah i have to say that now because i oops yeah secret project secret project no one knows about it um yeah now we can save it and there are mesh things and we just hit cut adult f for example and we can just save it as land file and um, just to have it there um, move that one down so it fits the reference image better so that is already nice now we can continue with different things we could continue with the snout or with this part or with the back head um, let's see I think we should maybe if make this part here so any ideas we can definitely or we have to use that one scale it up so the idea is that we now um, add another round thing here so we have this round thing this round thing and now another one here because that is already also round this area here I hope you can see my cursor if it's not on the recording thing then <laughs> everything I showed up because I don't know I don't remember if the cursor um, will be displayed later on I hope it will otherwise I failed a bit but it's okay Um, you will understand what I mean even without the cursor I hope so Um, so let's see what would be the best thing we can maybe just make them fit make them And now let's extrude that one here. Oops, like this. Which, um, <laughs> that wasn't the best idea I made. We can delete that one. <laughs> delete those vertices. I don't think we should fit those now. We should first. We should take a look how we will. 
make the whole loop and I think what we're going to do is we're going to extrude it here always try to also keep in mind that we later on have to connect them so look about that would be fit here and later on that should be f um, fit although we can always add in another loop mm. yeah so now line it up in side view um, ch -ch -ch. <laughs> So we now have to clear, clarify what that actually is because that one here is the jaw muscle that which is that one that we see here. So we actually have to move that one much more in because that's not the jaw muscle. It's more that part here. So let's move that in. You can just search for that would be nice. Um, that might be a bit problem how to fix that one but maybe we could just um, make quads everywhere so like that one and just Oops. Oh, by the way, now we have uh, overlapping vertices and we can't select them because they're not visible. If we want to do so, we have to click on that one. So now we can select them even if they're overlapping. Oops. Just moving them here. How I think they should look front view um yes mm. so the the question is how do we solve that problem here and we can solve it by we could just Make it like this, maybe that's the best way to keep this loop here, this one, oops, and, uh, whoops, why can't I select that loop, to keep this loop and let this loop end in this thing here, and now we have a strong kind of face are uh, faces that we can extrude for that. I'm talking <laughs> bullshit actually. <laughs> Sorry, but it's a bit late here in Germany. Yeah. So I want to um, go on with the snout now um shape looks fine and um yeah as always try to get that smooth so we have this curve here and here and also in front view we have this curves which is fine let's do that one clock so we can fill it and now we have the whole thing here and we can just extrude it so what we can do is we can change our model to wireframe so we can actually see around all the things here 
and I'm kind of thinking that that one is too high poly, so too much detail. Let's just move them in for now. So I'm. Oh, I can look at this in solid view. We can kind of merge those old M and old M. Um, maybe not here because that is a nice thing and merge them here. Or we can maybe hmm. no, that's fine. I was just thinking we should move that edge and but it's fine like it is. Um so That looks fine for the snout, and we can select the whole thing again and keep extruding, rotating it, scaling it, and moving everything in. Um, yes, like that. That should give a nice snout. We can go back to wireframe. and we can we have to check it from all different angles so that should look nice we can save it control s for saving it control shift s for saving it under a specific thing but that should look nice and um, so before we start with the nose, I'd like to go on and make this one complete. So, rotating it here, just trying to, to keep that round thing here, like that. Don't need a too high poly. This one should be fine like that. And now how can we solve that one? We could, for example, oh, I think we should subdivide it here, then it's not too hard. We can try it here, try it here, and that's actually nice. Mm. Yeah. So that is nice. We can go on and extrude it here. Um, for the lip, Usually it's easier if you just extrude, for example, one um, vertex or one edge or so because that, um, oh, let's see, um, because later on then you don't have to fix so much. So we're just lining it up with the lip. The lip looks like it's about here, this thing here. So. Just lining it up. Should be nice. So um, there's a problem in reference. That's usually one of the points when you get problems with your reference, the lips. And we can actually change the shading to smooth. As you can see here on the T, we can make it to smooth shading. And we can, well, that looks weird, right? Um, when you're looking at it, can just that looks weird. So let's disable the matcap. Go to solid, disable the matcap, and you can see that it looks bad. 
and that is because the normals are really really bad. I thought there was a option to show the normals. I'm not too sure though somewhere here. No. Well, the normals are usually things that are sticking out of each plane and show in which side and stuff the, the texture should be shown because there are two sides, right, of the new model. One of the in, one in the outside. So, how to fix the normals? We can see that is this blue is not the normal side. Not <laughs> normal. Um, usually, con control and N should fix it. And if it doesn't, control and shift N. So, for example, if you want to fix that area, select it, and it works. Right? So, when we go back to flat, we can see this area is fixed and smooth. That will smooth it out a bit, but right that one is fixed the other one's not so it's like oh control n and that will fix the normals and we can back go back to textured view and that should look nice we can enable our matcap again ah that is only possible in solid mode matcap and that looks nice we can go back to face air uh, to vertex select mode and to that line here. That's something I didn't want. So um, now we can see usually this, for example, this line here, this line of faces goes down to this, but because of that line it moves to the right side and not down and we don't want that so say that I'll say that and that should fix it right just some um, issues about the topology um, you, sh you maybe should care of now this is the part where the, the jaw muscle or I don't know what exactly that thing is gets prominent so we might want to move that one out a bit move that one in that one out to get those jaw things displayed in a nice way. We can just do that one to to see. And do that one. Um we have to to keep in mind that here this is where the mouse starts, right? So yeah, the reference doesn't isn't really clear in this area. We may want to take a look at another one. And but that is more or less nice. So we have to also we have to keep in mind. Let's hide that hiding is usually uh, actually also possible in object mode. Hide that object. That this one looks more like a zoom meerkat because it's a bit fatter or more fat. Just has more meat around around it and that's a bit thinner that's a wild market or it looks like it so all H2 with back so that's what we have to keep in mind but um, yeah that should be nice now we can go back and um, just close this round thing here this round loop this round topology thing so move that down try to get that one right hmm. fill let's see just select that part go to f-ups 
and now we can join them here and here and that should be nice so we um, have to be careful here we can just make that fit here because here is where the eye start starts but um, we can see we got some nice topology here we have this round thing here we have this round thing which maybe should get some fixing though we have this round thing we have this round thing around the eye and we have that big round thing that is nice so about that one maybe that should get some fixing we should maybe I'll try it here and because otherwise you can see the faces are looking a bit stretched out um, going in this direction but before they went in that one so we want to keep the natural direction it had before so that is actually a better opinion um, yeah that looks nice and I think we should leave it with this for now for this episode that was a lot and yeah see you next time hopefully bye hey guys if you like that video don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and visit us at auroradesigns.org or at the Zutekuntu roundtable the link is in the description if you want more tutorials be sure to check out Hendrix Stylus and Tutorial Series